Hey everybody, Phil here. Today we're gonna look at two players build a very big pot with very little hand. This is a a weird play. Damn, he's opening it up. Jason Kuhn takes on Elton Sang in this $2.3 million pot, and uh, we'll see what happens on a very interesting river. Kevin, I'm gambling the pot right What they do, you know? All right, so Jason Kuhn's gonna raise first one in. I mean, tell us to this text to the table. What's that? Huh? What'd you say? It doesn't feel that true. I guess it depends on how much you have in crypto. Set hunting. <laughs> I thought you're not. You know, Paul says he's set hunting right now. with no, eight six suited. Trying to put some mind games on his opponents. Blinds are 2,000, 4,000, and this hand has a modest start. No three betting, no four betting. Jason Cohen opens an early position with 6-5 suited, picks up three callers, ending with Elton Sang in the big blind with King-7 suited. Coon flops a straight flush draw. Six, nine is a straight. Looking for the nine of clubs or the, I mean the nine of hearts or the four of hearts right now. Love to see a straight flush on in our big cash game. Uh, but Tom duan has got the best hand. He's gonna bet top pair, 10 kicker. The ace eight seven flop gives everybody a pair except for Jason Kuhn, who actually has an open-ended straight flush draw. Really cool hand for him, and he can navigate it in a lot of ways. He opts to check, take a look at what the other players decide to do. It checks over to Tom Dwan, who, with top pair 10 kicker, decides to fire out a relatively big bet of 24,000. Now, Elton has bottom pair, but a backdoor nut flush draw, and I believe this should be a fold but it could be kind of close, especially if he thinks Tom's getting out of line. Elton, he's got bottom pair of a nut flush draw right now. He's actually going to make the call, or is he check raising? He's going to make the call with bottom pair. He's very suspicious of Tom. Well, I actually prefer raising to calling because you have two players left to act behind you still, and if one of them has a hand like Ace-10, like Tom has, you don't want to let them call behind. So. I would probably fold King-7 suited, but if I didn't fold, I would actually prefer raising, force out some ace -X in the middle and hope that Tom doesn't have anything or that Tom really believes us. See, but Jason Kuhn actually might check raise here. He can put a lot of pressure on these type of hands. Yeah, he, he's gonna raise to 100,000. And it's Jason Kuhn who actually puts in the check raise. Now this is a really cool hand from him. Starting out with a check as a free flop raiser, seeing a bet in the call, and with all of his equity going for the raise. Now, he has to be a tiny bit worried because the ace of hearts is not out there, which means if somebody has ace x of hearts, they're obviously not going anywhere, and Jason Kuhn's drawing very slim. But he takes his chances, puts in the raise. I can see why he wants to raise and just put a lot of pressure. I wonder if Tom Duong can read into this and maybe call a flop check raise and kind of see what happens on the turn. But I think he's going to let it go. The way he's grabbing his cards. Actually, no, he might call. He's Tom's thinking about what happened previously. Kuhn bluffed off a lot of his chips. Would Kuhn actually try and bluff off more chips? So he's going to let it go. Tom with ace 10 facing all of this action decides to fold. It's a really tough spot for him. And I do like his fold. I think it's the prudent play. It was already kind of thin to bet the flop with ace-10 into three other players, and he bet relatively big. Now, it folds back to Elton, who just has that bottom pair. Now, bottom pair is relevant. Jason Kuhn's value range is going to be a lot of ace-8 suited, maybe ace-7 suited, and a lot of 7-7 and 8-8. And the 7 blocks some of that pretty hard. You know, there's only one combo of 7-7 left now instead of three if Elton didn't hold the 7. Elton's often going to have an ace, and I actually think his seven is a better blocker than if he were to have a hand like ace-10. And Elton probably got a fold bottom pair. Maybe Elton's going to call here with just bottom pair. No, he re-raises to 324,000. This is a... Mm, a weird play. Wow. He decides to 3-bet, and this is interesting. 
he's saying that he's slow played against Tom's bet. I mean, he has a hand like sevens or eights. Obviously, he has the blocker for it. But I feel like when Jason Kuhn is check raising, the problem here is that Jason doesn't have a hand like ace queen. I mean, he's putting in too much money to have a hand like ace queen. So you're really targeting ace eight, which is kind of tough to make fold. Ace seven, which you block, is maybe tough to make fold. And then semi bluffs like Jason has, which actually can't fold. I don't like this three bet just because of the range that you're up against um, from Jason Kuhn here. Jason is not the kind of player who is just going to take a hand like king queen offsuit and check raise here. Jason Kuhn, though, I mean, he has a very good hand, just six high, but he's just got 55% chance to win. I think he's just going to call and see what happens on a turn. He doesn't think Elton will ever fold to a shove. He actually would. So when Elton makes it 324k, Jason could consider shoving. I think calling makes more sense. He's got position, and he's going to get to see how Elton reacts on the turn. Obviously, he can make his hand, or he can take the pot away later. And he's representing a lot of strength. Like, this is actually a huge 3-bet. When Jason makes it 100, he makes it 324. Um, by the time Jason calls, he looks really, really strong. And the nice thing about this for Jason is that Elton's no longer potentially going to have ace-x of hearts. This would just be a really bizarre line for ace-x of hearts. I don't think he would do anything other than call. So... Jason can be confident that either his flush draw is live or that Elton is unpaired. Elton trying to decide what Kuhn has. Turn is a queen. Elton has the nut flush draw of his pair of sevens. 736,000 in here. Now, Elton was pretty much giving up, but on this card, he actually might shove. The Queen of Diamonds turn is a really interesting one for obvious reasons. Elden picks up his King High flush draw, which is the nut flush draw. They've got 1.3 times pot remaining. So Elden, I'm sure here, was a little bit tempted to shove, but you don't really shove much in this spot. I think some players would shove a lot of value hands because there are a lot of straight draws out here. There are two flush draws out, and they just want to end the hand. So I do think shoving could have allowed him to represent a big hand. But I think in theory, you should be sizing smaller than that. So he's going to bit. All right. It's going to bet a lot. He's just going to shove them all in. <laughs> okay, he shoved in. 390,000. He's got 540,000 behind. A half pot bet. So he goes with a pretty hefty bet of 390k here. Obviously planning to call against a jam. Not thinking he has the best hand, but thinking he occasionally has the best hand. And if not, he's going to have his flush draw and maybe some other outs. Although maybe not. Jason Kuhn already down like 800k right today. He can get all his money back in his hand or he can lose a million euros. Possibly more because I think they were deeper. He makes the call. Jason can't really do anything but call. So in theory, you never really shove hands like this that are six high. You do kind of bluff shove some pair plus draw at least my understanding of theory, uh, as it works in these spots. So Jason just has to call again. He really needs to either hit something or have Elton check to him on the river. And we can see that if he did shove, he actually would have gotten called by Elton's bluff. So I think just calling and seeing a river in position is the way to go. Uh, 1.5 million. This pot could be bigger than the last pot we just saw. I played with him enough that I don't think he's got a so so soft girl. Let's put it that way. River's a four. Jason Kuhn makes the nut straight. Uh, the miracle of four of clubs rolls off on the river. Um, yes, Jason could have won on a number of other cards, uh, but as we know, you know, the four of diamonds could have been disaster. And there are a lot of cards where Elton might have bluffed and not given Jason the opportunity to bluff his six high. Even though, you know, he could have won the pot uh, in a lot of other ways. Trust me, uh, Jason's happy to see this four of clubs. Jason Kuhn is so relieved to see the four. Elton trying to decide if he can make a bluff. Yeah, mine's nowhere near that. Mine, you know, I wasn't like that close. I was, I was five steps. Trying to decide if he can shove here. I was like, what do you mean? Like, just a pair of sevens. Super slow. It's not just fine. So he checks. He gives up. Elton has to decide if he wants to continue repping a set with his seven. And in the end, decides to check. He's probably thinking there's a chance that he wins at showdown. Um, but a minuscule chance, and Jace is probably going to bluff shove if that's the case. But Elton can check and still decide. He Very often people will check here, not saying, oh, I'm going to check fold or I'm going to check call. They just check and say, well, I'm going to figure it out. Jason Kuhn's going to shove. 
I wonder if Elton will consider a hero call. If Jason Kuhn can have 6-5 of hearts, then that means he could have 10-9 of hearts as well, right? So, technically, Jason, I mean, Elton does beat a couple hands. Jason obviously has the nuts, and he's going to put all of his money in. There's, there's no other play to make. Unfortunately for Jason, when Elton takes this line, it actually looks like he was bluffing and he's given up because any hand that was value raising the flop and value betting the turn should just be shoving this river unless it really thinks that Jason has a misdraw um, or a draw that could have hit or could have missed. Jason's not going to get called here too often. We can see he's up against a pair that maybe could call, but uh, obvious shove from Jason, nothing else he can do. Elton does give it some thought and is right in that Jason does have a draw but he does have one of the draws that completed. Obviously, Jason can also have a hand like aces or eights uh, or ace-eight. It's kind of interesting. If Jason has ace-eight, I think he needs to shove and hope that Elden Hero calls, but Elden was repping a hand better than ace-eight probably previously, and he probably just has a check fold. So it's worth considering checking back ace-eight. Never worth considering checking back a nut straight. Because if Jason Kuhn had a a hand like king queen of hearts he probably just check it back because usually he's up against two hearts himself so nice show fold oh, can't on, show the bluff jason coon wins seven hundred eighty nine thousand. jason shoves the river of course and Elton in the end makes the correct fold lays down his seven which was beating some missed draws but uh, as we can see here, Jason had the goods. Very interesting flop spot. Jason's hand kind of played itself once he decided to check raise the flop. And uh, I'm sure he's quite happy. <laughs> Jason Kuhn is up 90,000 after losing 900,000 to Kane Callis. Uh, you missed miss a big flush draw? Huh? You missed a big flush draw? You missed a big flush draw? Yeah, Elton understands what you're saying, nice. Jason. But I was trying to find a way to call. Yeah. 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 I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little something as well. I enjoyed watching my friend Jason win a pot as the last one I reviewed was quite ugly for him. Until next time, take care and good luck.